Welcome back again to this tutorial where we shall be covering medical ethics and etiquette. An etiquette can be defined as a custom or rules which govern a behavior and are usually guided to be correct in social or official lives. We can also define etiquette as a conventional but unwritten code of practice that is followed by certain members of any certain professions. Etiquette can also be defined as a code of ethical behavior regarding professional practice or action among the members of a profession in their dealings with each other and with their clients. Examples of etiquette include a conduct in public places, a manner of dressing, a conduct towards patients and clients, conduct towards seniors and teachers, a conduct towards other workers, and also we can have uh, people's conduct towards their colleagues. Another thing that we are going to look at is ethics. An ethic is a standard of human behavior that tells us how human beings ought to act in the many situations in which they find themselves as either friends, parents, professionals, teachers, nurses or doctors. Medical ethics can be traced back to the guidelines in the duties of physicians, for example, in the Hippocratic Oath. Ethics are not the same as religion, they are not the same as feelings, they are not following the law, ethics is not a science, and ethics is not following culturally acceptable norms, but ethics are moral principles telling us what's good and bad. Ethics are the ones that tell us what's wrong and right. They are based on a value system. And ethical norms are not universally acceptable, therefore they depend on the subculture of the society where they are applied. A physician or a doctor must recognize the responsibility they have to the patients first and foremost as well as to the society to other healthcare professionals or colleagues, and also to self. These are not laws, but they are standards of conduct which define the essentials of honorable behavior for the physician or doctor. We have four main principles of medical ethics, that is autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. Let us start with autonomy. A patient or a client has a freedom of thought, intention and action when they are making decisions regarding their healthcare procedures or healthcare actions taken towards them. For a patient to make a fully informed consent or decision, he or she must fully understand all the risks and the benefits that are associated with the procedure and the likelihood of the success of the procedure. Always you need to respect the autonomy of the patient when the patient is free to choose. Therefore, such respect is not simply a matter of attitude but a way of acting so as to recognize and even promote the autonomous actions of the patient. The autonomous person or patient may freely choose loyalties or systems of religious beliefs that may adversely affect him or his health. The patient must be also informed clearly on the consequences of his action that may affect him adversely. Desiring to benefit the patient, the doctor, the nurse or physician may strongly want to intervene believing it to be a clear medical benefit and has a duty to respect the autonomous choice of the patient as well as the duty to avoid doing harm and also to provide medical benefit to this patient. But for the physicians, they should give a greater priority to the respect for the patient autonomy than to their duties. However, at times, this respect can be difficult to maintain because it can conflict with the paternalistic attitude of many healthcare providers or professionals. In the case of a child, the principle of avoiding the harm and the principle of providing a medical benefit that can restore the child to health and life should be given precedence over the autonomy of the child's parents as the surrogate decision makers. 
The next principle is beneficence. The practitioner or the doctor or nurse should act in the best interest of the patient. Considering the procedure to be provided with an intent of doing good to the patient, this needs the healthcare provider to first develop and maintain skills and knowledge by continually updating themselves through continuous learning and training, and secondly by considering individual circumstances of all their patients. Another principle is non-maleficence. You might have come across this term above all do not do harm. This makes sure that the procedure does not harm the patient or others in the society. When interventions are taken by physicians to create a positive outcome while also potentially doing harm, this is known as a double effect. Physicians are usually obligated not to prescribe medications that are known to be harmful to their patients and some interpret this value to exclude the practice of euthanasia. Violation of non-maleficence is the subject of medical malpractice litigation. What is medical malpractice? A medical malpractice is an act or omission by the healthcare provider which deviates from the accepted standards of practice in the medical community causing injury to the patient. An act or omission by healthcare providers that deviates from the acceptable standards of practice and causes injury to the patient. The next principle of ethics is justice. Justice encompasses fairness and equality. Justice is basically fairness and equality in the distribution of scarce healthcare resources and the decision of who gets what treatment. The burdens and benefits of new or experimental treatments must be distributed equally among the all groups in the society. And the four main areas that healthcare providers usually consider when evaluating justice are fair distribution of scarce resources, competing needs, rights and obligation of patients, and potential conflicts with established legislations. Thank you for joining us to the end of this tutorial and if you like it, we like to request that you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel also, 